Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Art Mixology. And in the last episode, we made melted metal paste. And when we were done, it looked like this. There we go. And then we also made melted metal texture. The premise behind Art Mixology, if this is your first episode that you're watching, is to find new and unique and different ways to use the art supplies we already have in our art journals, in our paintings, in our work in general. So, as part of that, I create recipe cards like you would for any other um, recipe that you have, um, whether it's a drink recipe or a food recipe, in this case, an art recipe, so Art Mixology. So, um, I created the recipe cards, I uh, have them in a file for you all, and the link for um, episodes 1 recipes and this episode's recipes will be in the description below. So anyway, we have two more recipes. How many times in this episode can I say recipes? <laughs> so this first one was... Um, actually, both of these were inspired my, by my quest to figure out new and unique ways to use some of my rubber stamps. So for those of you who don't know, I have my own rubber stamp line. This is one of them. This feather stamp is from that. And I have 15 different sets of stamps in my line. You can get them in the Etsy shop. Oh, wait, let's... There we go. <laughs> Let's zoom out. So for those who don't know, I have 15 different sets of stamps I designed myself and sell in my Etsy shop. This particular feather is from this stamp here, set number 14. We're also going to use this um, sort of foliage stamp. This is from stamp set number 13. And then I'm going to show you why, although I love this set with the hands, which is set number 15, uh, this hand doesn't necessarily work for this technique, but, and I'll show you why. Um, but again, there's 15 different sets. You can look in uh, my, my Etsy shop to see them. So this first recipe was inspired by the idea of gravestone rubbings, you know, where you people go to uh, graveyards, especially really old ones, with big sheets of paper and a stick of graphite, and they rub the tombstone to get not only the names and the dates, especially if you're doing genealogy, uh, but to get some of the carvings and artwork off the stones. Um, it is a thing, Google it. Um, so I thought, why can't we do something like that with rubber stamps? Why can't we? So I took a sheet of deli paper, and this is actually, I'm sorry, this is the deli paper. This is actually a vintage sheet of typing paper. Both of these will work. You want kind of a um, thinner paper. The deli paper worked a bit better. I also, as you can see here by the rubbings on here, tried a bunch of different materials. This green is actually a Tombow uh, brush marker. Epic failure. Don't try it with that. Um, the best things to do this with, in my opinion, were graphite. And I have a graphite crayon. If you have a graphite block, it would probably work really well. Um, a regular pencil. Um, I used a Stabilo Woody, and that actually worked pretty good. That's a um, kind of a softer color pencil. And then um, the Sakura Solid Marker. Um, all of these are available, you know, on Amazon. Um, you probably have at least number two pencils in your supply stash. So use what you have. Anything too soft doesn't work super well. So this here, I'm going to zoom back in a little bit. There we go. So this here worked okay, but this was an oil pastel and it wasn't great. Um, this here is the Sakura Solid Marker. Um, this is the Stabilo uh, Woody Fat Color Pencil. This is just a plain pencil. Uh, this one was another oil pastel. Uh, this is the Sakura Solid Marker in black, which worked really well. And then I decided to do it over the marker, which was a complete failure. And that actually, I like the way that looks. 
when you're doing these rubbings with a stamp that has a lot of detail, like the hand from my hand set has a lot of detail in it, you get an you get a decent you get an okay image, but it's not great. So you probably want to stay away from stamps that are too detailed. I think one of the reasons the feather and the foliage worked were because they weren't too detailed. So we're going to do one again, and I'm just going to show you really quick what I did. I'm going to use just a pencil. Now this is a, a darker than normal pencil. This is a General's layout pencil, which is a so kind of a softer but really dark pencil. And you want to just hold the paper down over the stamp. Now these are cling mounted stamps, so I've put them on an acrylic block. If you have a wood mount stamp, just turn it upside down. Hold the paper over the stamp and then hold your pencil sideways and just very lightly, don't push too hard, just rub it over and again go around your art room and see what you have that you can try this with okay so I'm gonna just switch stamps just just because and I'm going to show you with these Sakura solid markers which I really like these markers ah, if I can get it open it's like a giant crayon but it's paint and I'm I'm actually barely 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 touching it to um, the paper and it's probably almost on the verge of too soft but I like the way that looks I think that looks really nice uh, I'm going to try to squeeze one more out of one of these pieces of paper let's let's do the deli paper because you do get a I think the deli paper that vintage typing paper is nice I think you get a better impression from the deli paper but any thin paper that you have let's do the feather because it's a bit smaller actually no Let's do the foliage and let's do it here over where the marker was a failure. There we go. Um, this is a graphite crayon and it would work similarly to a block of graphite. And it works really well. It's probably my favorite tool to do this with is the uh, Lyra graphite crayon. And this is the graphite 9B crayon. Okay, and then I want to show you one more. Let's do the woody pencil somewhere. Let's do the feather because it's smaller. I can squeeze it in somewhere. <laughs> uh, how about here? This, um, Stabilo Woody Pencil, it comes in a lot of colors and it works really well. So those are my two favorites, are these two. The others work, but these work really well. So use what you have and practice with the stamps that you have and the pencils and crayons that you have and see what you can come up with. So now that we've done that, I need to take samples from here. Like with the other recipe cards in episode one, which I'll link in the description below. I take um, one or two samples and I attach them to the back of the recipe card so I'm not looking at the recipe going what later on because yeah believe me I'll do that so I'm gonna staple one on one side and then I, I like to do two because I've done this so many different ways so I'm going to do two and I'm gonna take one of these ones that's not only on the typing paper but that's done with a Sakura crayon. Now I will say that if you have done these rubbings and you're going later to use it in your artwork on a tag or a journal page, um, the Sakura crayon's not going to go anywhere if you use wet glue, but the graphite probably will. The woody pencil definitely will. Those are water soluble. So you want to be careful and I've used these on journal pages. I used a glue stick. So I would definitely advise using a dry glue, a glue stick, um, and or um, if you're super concerned about it, making sure that you use a medium to do the rubbing that is not going to move around after it dries. Okay, so now we have our new recipe card and I can show you really quick 
one journal page that I just finished that has a rubbing incorporated. Oops, there we go. So this is one of the rubbings. And I love that. So it's a, just a fun new element that you made to use in your journal rather than something store-bought. Using what we have, okay? So we're gonna put this in our Rolodex. And the next one is a lot of fun, but can be super messy, <laughs> just FYI. And I don't know how it would work with the hand, but I'm thinking that you would have the same problem because it would be too detailed. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. For this next one, you're gonna need, you're gonna need some thicker paper, like watercolor paper. Um, I tried it on thinner paper, it didn't work. I'll show you what I mean. You're gonna need a scrub stamp, a stamp cleaning pad. This is from Stamping Up, and it's a double-sided thing. You know, you clean the most of the gook off on one side, and then, you know, one side's the dirty side, one side's the clean side, basically. You wipe most of the gook off on one side, then you dry it off on the other side. Um, and the liquid I used to clean it is a Stazon all-purpose cleaner, which I really like. You'll need both of these. And then you're gonna need some masking fluid, which is a watercolor um, medium, for lack of a better term, that usually watercolorists put on the paper to preserve the whiteness of the paper um, before they start doing their painting. And then when they're done, they just rub it off and it reveals the paper. So I thought, why can't you stamp with um, masking fluid or can you even? And yes, the answer is you can. And you get some interesting images. I'm gonna show you the better ones. They're not perfect and pristine, uh, to be honest. I um, probably did it wrong. Um, I was doing it in a hurry. Um, I got too much masking fluid on this one, but that being said, I like the way it turned out. This is the first one I did. Now this is thinner paper and look what happened. And this was with spray ink. These two were with spray ink. And you got, I mean, it's interesting, but it wasn't what I was going for. So I would say that the spray inks um, don't really work. There wasn't really enough masking fluid on it to prevent the ink from going underneath, which was the problem, I think. So any um, um, thing that's too wet is not going to give you the same quality of image as these were done with acrylic paint. And part of the reason is because we're stamping with masking fluid and my stamps have lots of thin detail lines and it's really hard to get lots of masking fluid on those lines to preserve the white paper. So you're gonna have to just practice and play with what you have. Um, but that being said, let me um, stamp a couple off. Now I would recommend um, putting it to this on a dish and then when you're done, just let it dry and it should just rub right off and ball up like rubber cement. You don't need very much. This masking fluid is yellow. This is Windsor and Newton. And then it looks like that. And then you just literally, you just let it dry. Don't do anything with it until um, it's dry. What you do have to do is clean this off right away. Like when you're stamping with modeling paste or something else, you don't wanna have that dry on your stamp. It's gonna ruin your stamp. So first take a baby wipe to it. Then put some of your stamp cleaner on it. Then open up your pad. Scrub it on one side. Scrub it on the other side. And just make sure that you've gotten all the masking fluid off. And if you haven't, then do it again. So just because I want to see what's going to happen, I'm pretty sure it's not going to turn out well. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do the hand. I'm pretty sure it's not going to turn out well because I think it's got too many lines on it. It's too detailed, but we're going we're gonna to try. I should have put this on a flat plate instead of this little dish, but that's okay.
Give it a firm push and then lift. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not going to turn out super well because it's really, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think I am. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm wrong. We'll let that dry and we'll see what happens. Once it dries completely, go over it with some acrylic paint and then let that dry. And then you can get these sort of rubber cement erasers that of course will get rubber cement off of things, but they also work great on masking fluid. Um, you can also just use your fingertip. So I'm gonna clean this. We're gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. Okay, once it's dry, pick a color of paint, uh, any color. I'm gonna use this color, what is this? Medium magenta. And darker the better. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in there just because I want to. And this is manganese blue. You can use craft paint. These are just small, my small tubes that I use for art journaling. And cover the whole thing in paint. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but the masking fluid does resist the acrylic paint. So we are going to take this leftover paint. We're not going to waste it. That's on the brush, right? And we're going to, this is one of my many art journals. Just going to wipe the brush off and start a new page that way. And then stick it in some cleaner. And then I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, now the magic happens. Uh, like I said, though, I don't know how well that hand stamp is going to turn out because I think it's got too much detail on it. And the masking fluid's pretty watery. And I, don't, I, I just don't think we're going to get a great impression. But let's do the feather first. Now, I did dry this with a heat tool, which the masking fluid doesn't always appreciate. <laughs> so... So the masking fluid keeps whatever kind of paper you've stuck it on white. This is where we kind of stamped off the leftover masking fluid on the hand stamp. And I know what it is, but I don't think anybody else would ever be able to tell what that is. All right, here's the other one that we did. I'm going to use the... Eraser. So you can use your finger, you can use the eraser. As you can see, I switch back and forth. It takes a little practice to do this one because there's a really a fine line between using too much and not enough of the masking fluid. That being said, if you have some masking fluid laying around your art room and you're not really using it too much anyway, play with it with your rubber stamps. So just go over it and make sure that you've really gotten all the masking fluid off because the masking fluid stays kind of sticky. So you really, you really do want to get it all the way off. And then you'll be left with something like that. So when you get it right, you'll get an image like this. I mean, I, I like these, though. These would be an interesting addition. And this, the hand's not bad. 
I would maybe still use that. Not that anybody would really be able to tell what that is. Because it's, again, I think it's just the stamp has a lot of detail and I think that the masking fluid's too watery. But I think it's interesting. I think you should try it. The recipes for both these and the rubbings and the other two um, textures or ex mixology experiments we did from episode one are all downloadable in a um, document. And I will link episode one, which includes the recipe for the first two cards, uh, in the description below, along with the document for these recipes. So have some fun with it. Give it a play. And if you're in my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, and you come up with your own mixology recipes, not only am I great with you sharing these on YouTube, but please share them over in the Facebook group. We would love to see what you're up to. That's it for right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.